Hi, Mickey Bone Gang, and welcome back to the side of the road. Today, we're gonna be trying to get some crawfish out here in this. Uh, actually, this is I think part of a bayou or canal, or basically it's a drainage ditch now because uh, it's on the side of this highway. We we're supposed to go kayak fishing this morning, but the wind is supposed to be upwards of around 20 miles an hour. Right now, it's not quite that, but we're getting a little bit of a breeze, so hopefully, we don't have to deal with too much wind noise. You will hear cars passing by though in this entire video. Sorry about that. Just like that. I also need to throw my minnow trap out, try and get a few minnows for the pool pond bass that we got, try and get him fed. We got a few different traps. All of the traps we will be using beef milk because that seems to work the best for the crawfish. So I'm gonna get a few baited up and I will go over the traps as we do so. So let's go. All right, so the first trap we're dealing with So the first trap we're dealing with is basically just like a minnow trap. It's a little cylinder trap, cage looking thing. Still got some mud from Hurricane Ida stuck in there. You slap your piece of beef melt in there, which is essentially just uh, beef spleen from what I understand. I don't know who else eats that other than crawfish, but uh, let me know in the comments below if you fry that stuff up and chew on it. I don't, I don't even know if that's good or not. Let's just put the cage together. You slap the clip on to close it. You just go toss that joker in the water like that. Now, this spot's pretty shallow right here. Ain't nothing but mud and grass, which I'm sure the crawfish are in, but I don't know if they can get to the trap, so I'm gonna try and toss it over there. Well, that didn't work out. Let's try that again. Ah! Yeah, it looks like as good a spot as any. Alright, so the next kind of trap we're gonna set out is what they call a pillow trap. We're gonna use the same thing, some beef melt as the bait. Now, this kind of trap right here. Well, it's kind of shaped like a pillow, which is why they call it a pillow trap. Now, basically all this is is a wire trap similar to the other trap. It's got these little funnels on each corner like that where the crawfish can find their way in to get the uh, bait. But then when they try and get out, it's a little bit harder. They can't figure it out how to get out the trap and bam, you got them trapped. Now, in case you didn't know, because I didn't realize that until uh, recently, that crawfish actually need air to breathe. They got to come up, take a little sip of air. They can't just live in the water like crabs where you can leave the trap underwater for a couple of days and they'll be fine with these. You actually want to stick in the water and leave a little bit out the top so they can climb up, get a little breath of air and they don't suffocate and die. You know what I'm saying? So once you got the bait in there and you're ready, you just close up this side, you fold it over so that they can't get out, nothing can fall out that side and you go put them in the water. All right, the next one we're going to look at isn't necessarily a trap. It's more of a net. You got this little square piece of net on this little pyramid style uh, wire frame and you go you stick this in shallow water where this part will stick right out the top and you just set it on in there you give it a little while when you walk back you get a stick or something to grab it right here by the top of the pyramid you pull it out and you got some crawfish on the end hopefully and then uh you dump in the bucket real simple real cheap contraption if you want to go try bringing your kids crawfishing on a roadside ditch kind of like we're doing today don't really expect to catch a whole lot today uh, we kind of just scout this area to see if there's any in here last time i did it i found a bunch of little ones but uh nothing to shake a stick at nothing to strike up the pot for you know what i'm saying so there's also another kind of trap that i don't have here uh, but it looks like this and that's what a lot of crawfish farmers use on those uh, crawfish ponds A great spot to put this minnow trap to get those uh minnows for the pool pond bass uh, frank's got a couple crawfish traps out here i did put some melt in this thing along with some old bread that i had i know the minnows love the bread but they'll also eat that melt too and we might end up getting a crawfish question is where exactly do i want to set it probably right over there by them guys let's see yeah well, that's not good actually we're gonna stick it close to this bank right here in the shallow part that's where they was hanging Let's put it right there. All right. Well, we know they got crawfish here. There's evidence right there. All right, a few minutes have passed by. We got a bunch of the other traps set out. We didn't set a whole lot. Like I said, we're just really scouting. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and check the net, the little dip net, because you gotta check these every so often. You can't just let them sit like the traps because once they get on there, if they eat all the food, they're just gonna walk right off and they're gone. So you gotta keep checking this because you wanna catch them obviously while they're still on the net. So I got my little boat hook right here. That's all it is, a little extendable pole with a boat hook. I'm gonna reach out, pick it up, pick it up kinda quick. We're gonna get it over to the bank and we got some crawfish. Well, Miss Shot, tell you what, 
I was not expecting that, but we got three. Three decent sized crawfish, y'all. Wait, come look at this. Look at that. Look at that guy there. That's eating size, y'all. I tell you what, I'm actually surprised. Look, that's another one. He ain't too big, but he'll eat. And we got another, oh my goodness, look at the size of that guy. Here, let's pull some of this grass out of here. Look at that dude. That's eating that boy. That just means I gotta put out a couple more of these nets right here. So as you can see, we still got a little bit of melt left on there. They ate it down pretty good. So you gotta check this every so often, cause if we would have left it there for probably another five, 10 minutes, they'd have ate all of this and been gone. So I'm gonna set that right back out there. Woo, that's deep. That's filling up the boot. Oh, that's deep. Yep, that boot is full. Oh. Yeah. Better get more than three crawfish, I tell you what. Oh. Ooh, getting melted, huh? This is the spot where I tried to put that little net before, couldn't quite get it down in there. But with this trap, I ought to be able to get it pushed in there, pushed past the weeds and the, the duckweed. So as long as these little funnels are in the water, we should be good to go. And now that my boot is all soaking wet, it really don't matter anyway. I'll just get in there. Woo, yeah, it's some good vegetation. There's probably crawfish all up in here. I don't tangle myself up by these ropes. Just gonna toss it right there. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna be good to go. Honestly, that's perfect. Got the little cork, we'll be able to see that. Back and come get the traps now. Normally you would like to leave these things out overnight and just come check them back in the morning, but the particular area we in, there's actually some rules that have to be monitored while you're out here. You can't leave them overnight and you're only allowed so many per person. So yeah, let's go try and set out another one. All right, I'm gonna try and get it over there in that little open spot, but uh, like I said, my boot's already wet, so I'm gonna try and wait out here. I don't know how long this rope is. Whoa! Oh yeah, there's actually some water in here. It's just the grass is grown up so thick. You can walk on it. And I'm gonna hold the cork. Oh yeah, your, your rope's just like two foot too short. It's all right, I'll sink that boot again. There we go. Frank gave me this trap with no rope on it, so we're gonna have to get up close and personal in this hole. Oh, actually, that ain't bad at all. I wanna widen these holes a little bit because then big crawfish need to sneak in there. I honestly think that might do good. All right, I tell you what, Frank, let's go check them other traps. And if they ain't got nothing in them, Bring them this away. Uh oh, Frank got one in the in the uh, trap, the pillar trap that he set over here. All right, here comes a trap, and no. Trap number two. Ooh, that's a big box trap. And nothing. All right, little buddy, out you go. Oh, that's my melt. I need that back. All right, it's time to check the net again. Nothing. Caught the only three crawfish that was there. All right, we're running out of time for today, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these traps, see what we got, and uh, then we're gonna head back to the house. But I'm gonna slap on the old GoPro, give it the old first person view POV uh, for the rest of this, so. Let's go check them out. All right, trap number one. See where I put the string. I think I tied it, oh yeah, tied it to this grass right here. Let's go see. Hopefully I got some minnows in here. And got some minnows. Let's fill that bucket up with some water. Be some food for the fish pond. A little bit of muddy water. All right, guys, get in there. We'll try and get you some fresher water in a minute. Oh. Looks like this fish was getting eaten on. Look at this. Looks like he got stuck and the crawfish was eating on him. Huh. First pillow trap. Yeah, first pillow trap. And nothing. 
again these traps are going to take a little longer for something to get in them than it does that net so don't necessarily mean there's no crawfish but they might have just not had time to find the hole here it is here it is well if they had any crawfish in that crab they done it the somersault coming out i don't think there is any I'm not nope just bait nothing all right so if y'all see all this vegetation it's a good spot to try for crawfish because believe it or not crawfish don't just eat meat like this they actually like to eat uh vegetation especially the smaller ones I had, if you watch the videos oh oh jeez them jeez them all right hold on i'll leave a link in the description uh some other videos that i did last year or maybe even the year before that when i had the original pool pond i put a bunch of crawfish in there i had a bunch of hyacinth uh lilies in there and when i put the crawfish in there they absolutely devoured it so and then i actually fed them corn they like that too i'm gonna pick up the net for the final time i doubt that melts even on there anymore between the minnows and any crawfish nope nothing but grass all right here we go this was the three foot filler trap again i don't expect too much to be in there They ate all the food though. I think it's them minnows. Yeah, I'm sure it's a combination of those minnows chewing it up and then the crawfish being able to get to it. Cause that one underneath. Actually... All right, so if you guys have any questions about the traps that we uh, we had today, make sure you leave it in the comments and I'll uh, try and answer all the questions you have as best of my knowledge. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try and find it for you. But we ended up catching three, four, five crawfish. So many, I lost count. But we need to throw them back because uh, there's certainly not enough to eat. And we don't even have time to eat them. We were just really just out here scouting out, seeing if there were any crawfish. I'm actually surprised that they were this big because last time I caught any out this way, they were a little T90. Really need to try and find a better crawfishing spot. I got a couple of ideas that we want to try this year. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. But right now, let those guys go so it's time to head back to the house i'm gonna go pick up that minnow trap empty the minnows in that little bucket and then i'm gonna head on to the house and feed that pool pond bass before we get on with the rest of our day so if you guys want to see that make sure you follow me on instagram because that's usually where i put it uh maybe i'll make some shorts to put here on youtube as well feeding that pool pond bass because it's uh quite quite interesting to watch that sucker go to town but anyway guys that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for this one folks i thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 doesn't look like uh we got much of a chance to that but i'm not giving up hope yet you guys are the best make sure you uh you know reach out to your friends reach out to your enemies tell them subscribe if you uh enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and i will catch you on the next one